All right, in the second example, again, as I said, the only difference is, is I have three factors. I actually have two factors of the x plus two and this x minus one. Obviously, this is a little bit nicer since it comes actually already factored. And the important thing is you could use moves like the rational root theorem or other techniques to factor these, but we won't talk about that. I want to talk about if you can factor this or have an easy factored version, how to do this breakdown. How we're going to do this is we're going to have three terms. When we do this x plus two, we need to have an x plus two term and then an x plus two squared term. So it's really important. Like if I had an x, x plus two to the third, I would have an x plus two term, I have an x plus two squared term, and an x plus two cubed term. You probably won't have to deal much with that, but I want to uh, spell that out. What we're going to get then here is this. So as I write these out, I'm going to have an x plus two term, as I said, and then I'm going to have an x plus two squared term, and then plus an x minus one term. Again, to say, if I had three independent factors, I would just write those out, right? If I had like an, an x uh, plus five, x plus two, and x minus one, I would have a term for each of those. This is how you deal with it if you have this duplicated linear term here, in this case, x plus two. And so how I'm gonna do this now is I'm just gonna use a, b, and c to be these constants that are up here. And my job is again to find these. The first thing I'm going to do is to multiply everything by this denominator right here. So I'm multiplying everything by x plus two squared, times x minus one. Again, as I do this and I multiply this to each of these terms, whatever is already in these denominators cancels whatever I have. And so in this case, let's have an x equals. So I multiply this, I cancel one of those. And so I'm going to get a times x plus two times x minus one. In this term right here, the x plus two squared cancels. And so I just get b times the x minus one. And then C here is the x minus one gets canceled. I'll just get these uh, this double factor here of x plus two. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to rewrite this out, but I'm going to expand these terms, well, specifically this one and this one right here in pre preparation to distribute my constants through. And again, what I did there was I expanded these expressions right here. I'm now going to distribute my constants through here in each of these terms. Um, again, with the goal, just like I did last time, I'm going to expand them through, and then I'm going to combine all of those like terms together and attack these at these coefficients. All right, so again, all I've done there is distribute all of these through. I think I did everything right. Now moving together to combining like terms. So first thing I'm going to do is let's put these uh, a, it's x squared terms together. So a, a x squared plus c x squared is a plus c x squared. So I've gotten rid of those now. And let's go on to the x terms. I have a x plus b x plus four c x. And so that gives me a plus b plus four c x's. And again, you don't have to do this all in one move like I'm doing it here when you're first getting used to it. You could put all the x terms together and then factor out that x. You would get that same thing. Again, I'm thinking about these as combining like terms and just being fine with combining these more abstract constants. And then what do I have here for my constant? I have a negative 2a, negative b, and a plus 4c. So I'll just say plus negative 2a minus b plus 4c. All right, so that is the main work of getting this all set up, setting up the decomposition for the partial fractions, organizing stuff, distributing, just doing algebra to get my terms together. Now what I'm going to do is make my analysis to get my linear system. So in this case, I have this for my quadratic term. Again, I'm comparing this side to this side. In this case, all I have is this linear coefficient of one. Um, I, cope, I don't have a quadratic term, which means this needs to be zero. In this case right here, this is actually the only thing that's really interesting. I need to get one x, which means this right here needs to equal one. And then I have no constant. And so again, over here, this part right here is going to equal zero.
So that gives me this linear system right here, where a plus c equals zero, where a plus b plus 4c has to equal one, and where negative 2a minus b plus 4c needs to equal zero. And again, if you haven't had a lot of work with with three or more variable systems, it's not a really big deal. Any of the techniques that you use for two variable systems work here. Substitution, addition, elimination. But just to give you a, a kind of an overview of this, what I do if I have a three variable system is I want to break it down into a two variable system. So I have three variables here, but if I could create a, a system, a system from this that only has two variables, I can solve that with any of my techniques. This is a little bit easier in this case. So since I have a plus c right here, what I want to do with any grouping of these equations is I want to make another equation that has just a and c in it. This sets it up pretty nice. In this case, what I'm going to do is simply add these two equations together right here. I'm going to add them because I get this canceling of b. b is the odd one out in this case right here. If I add these two together right here, what I'll end up with is a minus 2a, which is a negative a, the b's cancel, and I get 8c. And that's going to equal 1 plus 0, which is equal to 1. And I'm coupling that with this equation I have right here, which is a plus c equals 0. And I'm, again, just going to use this addition elimination. This sets it up really nice. a plus a is just 0. 8c plus 1c is 9c, and then 1 plus 0 is 1. There I have found that c equals 1 ninth. It's not too tough here because uh, I have, again, this equation. If c is 1 ninth, then a must be the opposite of it because they add together to be 0. So I also get that a equals negative 1 ninth. Just to say real fast again, for anybody who feels a little bit out of the box here with these linear systems, I could have plugged c equals 1 ninth into any of these equations that just have the a and c. I could have plugged it into this one, though I think we could argue it's easier to plug it into this one, which is actually this equation right here, to find a. But now that I have a and c, um, all I need to do is plug a and c back into either one of these equations. I'll plug them into this equation right here. It looks a little bit simpler to solve for b. And since I'm kind of running out of work, out of room over there, I'll just do that right here real fast. So to find my, my B value, I have A equals negative one ninth. I have my B that I'm going to solve for. And then I have four times C. So four times one ninth, this would be four ninths. And this equation all equals one. And so I have one, negative one ninth, uh, four ninths. I'll just put those together to get three ninths which three ninths, I'll just write this. I hope this is not too fast for you here, but that's just one third. So three ninths, one third, subtract over one third to get that B equals two thirds. So now I've done the big tough work. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, replace the A, B, and the C up here just so we can see it with these coefficients. By the way, uh, I'm just to say this. When I think of A as negative one ninth, I definitely can think of it as a negative one ninth here or a negative one over nine. It really doesn't matter. What I'm actually going to do when I actually do this anyways is I'm going to pull out that constant outside the integral for each of these terms. So it doesn't matter how you write it. But I'll just write it like this. I'll replace A, B, and C with their values. And then let's, let, let's start attacking this uh, integral right here. So all that algebraic work has now told us that this equals this. What I'm going to do is instead of just replace this statement with, with that, I'm going to replace it and break it up in one move. Um, so what I'll get is the integral of negative 1 ninth uh, over x plus 2 dx plus the integral of 2 thirds over x plus 2 squared dx and plus the integral of 1 ninth over x minus 1 dx. Then as stated a second ago, I, I don't need to think deeply about these fractional pieces right here. What I'm going to do is just pull those out in the front of each of those. They're simply constants, and I'll leave them out to be multiplied by when I actually do the actual integration. 
So now I have three different integrals to calculate. Actually, the first one and the last one here are not going to be difficult. They're going to be identical to the work I previously did. Again, doing this mental U substitution, but not having any factor to worry about um, for this linear down here because I have a one in front of both my constant, my, my variables, excuse me, here. So I'll do those two because they're, they're really straightforward. So this becomes negative one ninth. And this is the natural log then of u, which in my case, u is the x plus 2. What I'm going to do for this middle term, I'll just say, is I'm going to rewrite this just to make it a little easier in my mind. You could do this all mentally probably also if you got used to these. But I'm going to write this as x plus 2 to the negative 2 dx. And then here I get the 1 ninth. And this will be the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 1. And here, for this whole integral, is where I'll add my, my integration constant here, plus c. All right, so I placed my integral sign that I had forgotten right there. But so again, just to make this really clear, I have integrated the first and third terms. I haven't done this yet. What I'm doing here is simply setting up a, to use a power anti-power rule on this move right here. Um, and to really point it out, I couldn't use these here because that was 1 over u. We don't use the anti-power rule when we have this u to the negative 1, which is what 1 over u is. That's how we use the natural log. In this case, since it's not 1, again, it could seem more complicated, but it's actually in my mind, a bit easier because what I'm going to use is the anti-power rule. I can think of a u substitution as u equals x plus 2, but there's no, no uh, constant factor to deal with there because I just have a 1 in front of my x. And so I'm going to use the anti-power rule on this. So this goes to negative 1, and I divide by negative 1. So we'll make that a negative 2 thirds. Hopefully that all follows for you. I know I'm doing a little bit here all kind of uh, at one time, but trying to keep this as condensed and clean as possible and model how I hope that you do it when you do it yourself. So I get that negative division of negative one, which now makes this a negative two thirds. That becomes an x plus two to the negative one. I'll write that as just one over x plus two, just uh, just because I want to. And then plus the one ninth times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus one plus c. So as many of the topics we covered in integral calculus, uh, this, this has a bit of work to do. Hopefully the focus of this video, and, and maybe this part got you a little mixed when I was going quickly through that, but the real new thing new, in quotes, is this partial fraction decomposition. I think the hardest part is just setting it up right, making sure you combine everything, not making mistakes. By the way, when I wrote my note for this one, I think I did something dumb, like I made this a negative BX, and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get it right. Just small little things like that, like bookkeeping, keeping yourself organized. Solving the system, two variable, three variable, it could be a four variable system if you're given a really difficult problem. Um, but usually we'll, at most we'll just have a three variable system. We need three equations to solve for three variables. Again, the technique there was you have three variables, create a two variable system by attacking one of the variables. Here it was B. I only had, only took me one move to do that, by the way. But if I, if every um, equation there had B, I would have to do that canceling of B twice to get two different equations that don't have the B in them. And then I can attack that two variable system. Again, I, I choose addition elimination because I think it's the quickest. You could use substitution just fine. You get exactly the same answers. Getting that to this right here. The beauty, every time you use partial fractions, if you're able to get to that part, the actual integration then becomes very easy because we have just these constants up in the numerators that makes our life really, really nice. Then we have these linear factors. Again, you hopefully feel comfortable with these, this natural log stuff right here. And then something that has an exponent like a square is not any more complicated. We're just going to use the um, anti-power rule again actually doing a u substitution or doing this mental u substitution. I've said it a bunch and it's probably overkill at this point, but if I had a 2x right here, I just want to point out that when I did this move, I also would have divided by 2 or multiplied by 1 half. That's how I would have done that mental u substitution in any of these cases, though I didn't end up having any coefficients to deal with. And I have this beautiful solution for the integral of x over x plus 2 squared times x minus 1.